So we are starting the recording. Hi, Sephira. Hello, Max. Nice to see you. Uh, nice to see. You. After all is setting up, we finally set up, and you know, amazingly, technology seems to be working fine, and we are being recorded. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Um, what should we discuss? Well, hmm. I can say that uh, I applied to the colonies a few months ago, I think, mm -hmm. in November. Yeah. And then I had a series of dreams after that where I was in, I was like in a church service. Anyway, there was a priest there and I asked him, I said, can I overcome the guilt I have, you know, from past whatever. It was in a dream. It was in a dream. and, and Okay. It, it was about guilt, mm -hmm. and it was about guilt connected with sexuality, and he said yes. Oh. He said yes, but his face was like alien. I wasn't sure if he was alien or human when I woke up, and I, I had a series of dreams like that. I was also in another meeting where, with a lot of people, and I started to float towards the center, which was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So I, I felt like they had scanned me, right? You, we talked about they, they receive an application, then they do some scanning of a person, or they check them. Oh, out. yeah, yeah, screening, scanning, uh, interviewing, yes. Yeah, so I don't think I was interviewed, but I think they kind of came and um, gave me some advice, because as far as being clear enough, like all that inner stuff coming out in order to do channeling, or there was another video I saw with you and someone else, and they were talking about freeing up the throat chakra by eliminating a lot of darkness inside and yeah I'll, I remember I, something of that yeah yeah and I, I'm a natural communicator but uh -huh. I I have a lot of time uh, trouble expressing myself which sounds odd to be a communicator and yet I feel sometimes so stuck right here uh, mm -hmm. I'm easier it's easier for me to write than it is to talk so I was realizing that because of that first dream about clearing up some guilt and some other things that I have some stuff to clear out of myself and yeah so those dreams what, are interesting what's your zodiac sign I'm a Pisces Pisces <laughs> uh, what what uh, what is the day of the month February 25th and I'm, February. I'm sorry that I missed your birthday I told oh, my I told myself, don't forget Max's birthday. Because... It's formality, you know. <laughs> no, I wanted to say happy birthday because I saw the video where Jim said... Well, he... Let's celebrate it now. Say oh. happy birthday now. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Thank you. Happy... I mean, it's just Earth years. And, you know, in uh, other years, it would be completely different. It's just a formality. Anyway, I'm the 25th of February, uh -huh. which is coming up. And... So thinking about sexual guilt and throat chakra and priest what what religion are you in or were you brought in <clears throat> i've been following the unification thought for a long time i remember i wrote you this whole long letter about Reverend moon and jesus and that's how i would prove it was jesus who came through in the channeling and so i grew up catholic but sort, uh -huh. of, sort of loosely catholic loosely so, catholic. yeah <laughs> you know like the going to the holidays kind of kind of thing that we do here in America. in America. I grew up on Long Island, New York. Oh, Long Island. Yes, I'm from Long Island. And, Great place. Um, Which so part I, of Long Island? Was it uh, very rich and uh, prosperous or the other one? <laughs> we started out rich and prosperous with my dad and then he left and then we weren't so rich and prosperous. But we grew up in Syosset, New York which was actually a great town, and the high schools there is really award-winning high school. It was a good high school, but I moved to San Francisco when I was when I was 21 or 22. I moved to San Francisco. Yeah, then I lived a wild and crazy life, and from, <laughs> yeah, but I've been a part of... I feel several, jealous. You feel jealous? Of course. <laughs> you know, crazy life in San Francisco, that's what oh, I want. Yeah. I had Berkeley. Like, Berkeley is my is my favorite place. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, so um, but I've been a part of sort of new religious movements for many years and metaphysical studies, and 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 um, I I am spiritually open as far as feeling things and hearing things at times, but I'm supposed to be a medium, but I I block it. I've been told every medium I ever meet 
it says to me, you're medium, and I smile and I say, <laughs> I don't know, I block it, I just keep blocking it. So I want to have, I want to experience the um, galactic friends more directly and intensely. But I think they showed me that I need to clear out some stuff and guilt was one of them. Yeah. So that was interesting. And you and I, Max, we both have a hybrid son on ERA. Your your son's name is Peter, right? Oh, we have two different hybrid sons. I thought I'm a father and you're a mother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know, Max. We, you never know. Uh, no, but anyway, no. Um, you and I both have different hybrid children, excuse me, on, <laughs> on the planet ERA. And... I found this out through Lakesh when I did a private session with Jim. All right. And yeah, and I would, I had, the less experience I had was I saw a spaceship landing outside. It was dark. And the next thing I know, I'm walking with this young woman and we walk into a garage and she, for some reason, she takes a stool and she sits on it and I'm directly facing her, leaning against her. And this light starts moving in a circle around us. And as if we're going to be transported. And I looked directly in her eyes and they were brown, kind of like really round brown. So a little bit different from human. But she was very, you know, beautiful smile on her face. And I was relaxed. I had no fear. And I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> and then I woke up just in that moment. And I'm like, oh, why did I have to wake up? <laughs> why couldn't they take me? Because I sent a letter asking if I could immigrate to ERA. <laughs> Emigrate. I uh, said I want to come. I didn't do that. That's an idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean that goes without saying. Actually, yeah, I am applying now. You yeah. know, that's official application. Take me and my family dogs, and the dogs. Uh, yeah. We would love to go to air and uh, yeah. for for a long term stay, short term stay. Long term would be great. Yes, me. And getting some education at the area would be terrific. Would be and awesome. we would contribute a lot. Would, uh, I can, uh, yeah. seriously, I can do a lot of, I can, we, we can, every one of us can contribute. I think so. So we apply. And, you know. And end of transmission. Yeah. And, you know, through, through my years, I've been working with different religious leaders and community leaders, uh, dealing with diversity, you know, and bringing together diverse cultures and dialogue. So I'm, I'm like I would be, a, I would like to be an ambassador, you know, or mediator or something, a teacher. I've been a teacher, counselor. So I'm just waiting. And so do I. I, I would be a teacher. Yeah. I can teach many things, especially okay. survival on Earth for hybrids. Yeah. We can do a boot camp for hybrids on any planet. I can <laughs> set an obstacle course, and the worst would be, uh, what would the worst? Uh, uh, just hold on a second. That would be customs. Yeah, Earth customs on any airport. That would be the worst <laughs> ever. Or uh, toilet in Russia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Of course, you have uh, yeah more credentials than I do, but I have. No, I don't know. Everybody, you I, live the you live the happy, crazy life in San Francisco. I, I mean, that's a great credential. And, and Long Island as well. No. Yeah, and and then I moved Max. I moved to Germany for twenty years. Yes, yeah, so I think, I, you know, it's a big life. Um, yeah. Germany. How do how do you like Germans? Um, I mean, that's uh, that's you know, for Russians, that's a very critical question, and we are very close mentally, and uh, you know, we respect a lot of German stuff, but yeah. you know, uh, the the war was kind of there. The Germany showed their other side, right? Basically, following the orders and. I think it was Einstein or maybe someone else who said if the, if the thing repeated and again there was a dictator, they would do the same thing again because that's the, their nature. Mm -hmm. Is it true? Okay, let me tell you a very important thing that happened in Germany, a very, very important thing to counter that assumption that All right. happened again. When I was, it was 19, early 19, 1995, I think it was. There started to be a movement of racism and Nazism again in mm -hmm. Germany. Now, what happened is all the German people in most of the major cities walked at night for several days with candles and said, no, 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 never again. 
and it stopped it. It stopped that whole potential, you know, to, like you just saying, to could have come up again with this whole past. Excellent. And I, I just spoke to a friend in Germany like a few days ago, and um, a Jew from Russia, yeah, an old Jew from Russia, and yeah. he said, "No, things change." He said, "There is so many new people; they are completely different." Yeah, and I feel that moment in 1995 was a restoration because you know, restoration and karma works that, as you know, the same things happen again and again until we treat it differently, until we react. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So most of the people came out and said no, I thought that was, I was so happy, I thought that was so awesome. Now, I have German ancestry, I have Russian ancestry. You do? And, yeah, I do. Yeah, my my grandfather's name was Burkowski, and mm -hmm. we're not sure, uh, he, uh, supposedly he grew up in uh, Vilna, which is a intellectual Jewish university town, it was, at the time, but it was like part Polish, German, Polish, Russian, you know, like the Boundaries kept changing, right, with the history, the borders. So um, I'm pretty sure it was Russian. And the last name is Polish. But, you know, <laughs> you can never tell. But I thought if it ends with a Y, it's German. And if it ends with an I, it's Polish. Anyway, it was definitely... I'm not sure. He's definitely... My sister said that he's Russian. So but, she, I mean, that's, that's it. You know, many Polish people went to Russia, so it, it's possible. It could be. So I don't know. In any case, yeah. So um, my my relatives, uh, one one of branch of Jewish ancestors, are from Latvia, which is close to Vilna, Resigny, Latvia. Yeah. So it's you know four hour train or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I suppose I had to go to Germany, you know, to kind of restore some because I have Jewish background too, from my father, and and you know Prussian and German, and the Italian is in there somewhere. So my wow. husband is from Sicily. My former husband is from Sicily. So here I was with a Sicilian husband living in Germany <laughs> as an American. And yeah, we had three kids over there. And you've met, you've met my son online. Yeah. My daughter. Where, where, where did I meet him? I don't remember. Was it on the webinar? Yes. With Shakir. Yeah. He asked, okay. he asked a question. In any case, you didn't see him, but you heard him. I see. I think you, whatever. Anyway, okay. Jim has met uh, my two daughters because we did some channeling with him and Lakesh. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, so anyway, about Germany, it's a, it's a very, it was a very, very safe place to raise my children. Very safe. When I left America, which was 1989, you know how the children, I don't know how long you've been in America, but the children were... 96, I came in 96. Okay. So and the first time I visited in 93. So it's close. Okay. Well, when I left, there were kids' faces all over the milk cartons. You know, so many children went missing. And I see. it was a bit scary if you had kids at that time. But in Germany, it was like totally different. It was safe. Just, the people are honest. They're hardworking. The hardest thing for me was the the gruffness. Uh, Germans tend to, tend to not put much uh, value on courtesy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, they have a very dominant uh, character. So Russia has also, basically, the letters are very all capitalized, right? Like it's all, you know, mm -hmm. very, it's also a very dominant culture. So I think there's, um, yeah, I, I've seen some similarities between the Russian personality and the German personality. But in any case, um, yeah. So it's rich in two extraterrestrials. I have two thoughts. One is you have so much mixed lineage, very unusual, and uh, and also extraterrestrials in your lineage, right? I do. I have. I uh, I was told by Lakesh that I have uh, about 150 years ago. I was um, became a Pleiadian, or the ancestry um, became Pleiadians, or there was Pleiadians. It's about six generations ago, or six yeah. to eight generations ago. Pleiadians. Yeah. Same same with me. Actually, I have. Multiple lines of it's not one Pleiadian becoming a member of the family, mm -hmm. it's more like several ancestors, maybe two, at least two Pleiadians in that ancestry. So it goes from different lines, yes, yes. And that's very usual. Uh, I didn't ask Lakesh yet, how did it happen? Did they leave on earth or they just came and have love with women, or it was fully technological and they kind of just injected their DNA? I didn't ask that, that would be. That's you know, a, essential for our history, right? Yes, yeah, a very good question. Um, Steven Spielberg did a, um, a miniseries called Taken, where um, 
I guess the Yell, Yell, Yellel, Yell, how do you call them? Yell, Yell, Yeah, Yell, Yell, Yell. Uh, yeah. Jim calls them You Yell, but uh, yeah. I think it's Yeah Yell. Okay. okay. Anyway, there was a there was a, um, E.T. He came and he made love with a woman and they had a kid and he was a very special child and mm-hmm. yeah. So I also don't know how it happened with me. I was told though that my hybrid daughter, what happened when I was about thirty years ago, uh, some of my DNA was taken while I was sleeping. That's uh-huh. it. That's how that supposedly happened. Yeah. Normally they take uh, the full uh, egg and fertilize it. Oh. I don't know if they fertilize it inside of you or outside. They can do either. Oh, yeah, I, I don't know. In earlier stages, they had to let the embryo to develop to a certain stage, and then they would take the embryo. But now they're more advanced. They can t- do it very early. Mm. Interesting. I don't know. I used to have some, you know, those paralyzed sleep states? Oh yeah, I I cherish them. Yeah, you do what? I cherish them. You do? Uh, when you are paralyzed, you are in another dimension. That's what Bashar explains. Uh-huh. You evolve, we evolve from third dimension to the fourth dimension, and we are not fully capable of moving in fourth dimension. So we are when we are paralyzed, it's basically it's astral travel. You are elsewhere in your soul, and your body is left by itself so when you come back you don't have full control your your soul is not fully penetrating the body uh-huh. so and it takes time to get it back and if you trust it will it will get there but if you panic it kind of prevents the soul you know getting control of your body so uh-huh. when i meditate almost every meditation i get that sleep paralysis and really? it's just i know it's part part of the meditation i uh first you know when i come back I'm fully paralyzed except breath. I can control yeah. my breath. Yeah. Then my legs start moving, and I typically hold my hands. Yeah. Like that, one on the heart, one on the mm-hmm. little below solar plexus. Yeah. Right hand. I think. Right hand yeah. on the heart. Yeah. And. Uh, I'm sending the healing Reiki energy there, so I really feel a lot of heat under the hand like heat and you know it's like a little tension like tension tension and heat and i keep that and i will normally would keep it for another 15 minutes Mm -hmm. so i have still hands paralyzed i still feel that energy flowing but Mm -hmm. i just don't touch them don't take control of them and uh, and it's very healing so so i i welcome uh that sleep paralysis and i'm not afraid at all i know i'm uh, when time is right i will come back and if i want to come back sooner yeah, I started moving my feet and I started breathing quicker and I just send the intention, loving intention to come back sooner and I come back sooner. But if I want to hold, I can hold for, for quite a yeah. while. And do you remember what's happened in your astral travels? Do you have any lasting memories? You no, know, I don't have full control in my astral travel. It's more like I'm, I'm astral traveling in my dreams. So I'm always in dream state. I, I'm never astral Almost, almost never astral travel in a uh, awake state. When I astral travel in a awake state, I can't go beyond my room. And you know, if I go like above the roof and fly around, I feel I'm more imagining that that's a real thing. But when it's a real thing, I'm in dream state. So somehow I'm blocked from astral traveling in in awake state. Ah, uh, okay. Well, you know, these par- uh, sleep paralysis happened to me very often when mm-hmm. I was too young to understand what they were. So I was more afraid of them, mm-hmm. and I always tried to force myself awake. But supposedly, according to Lakesh, at those times was when I was some DNA was taken. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Recently, I had visit by Lakesh when he, when not Lakesh, his uh, other what's his name, uh, short blue Pleiadian uh, colleague. Uh-huh. So uh, he entered as as he would enter gym. Really? Yeah, and uh, I was scared. Uh, In the childhood, especially when I was sick, when I had high fever, I had a nightmare that, you know, big and small is a big part of that nightmare. I am so tiny, and the world is so big, the earth is so big, and I'm so tiny, and that... That kind of, you know, normal thing, but it became like really, really scary to me. Wow, yeah. So that small, big nightmare just came to me, you know, a month ago or so. Oh, really? And I was 
awakened in the middle of the night of this nightmare. I was so scared. And then they decided, hmm, how about I take it differently this time? Let's remember Bashar's lesson. Let's take it differently. Let's think that maybe it's, it's, it's extraterrestrials playing with me. How about I take it <laughs> just fine? Whatever. Yeah. Scary, that's fine. I take it. And they decided not to be afraid. It was a conscious decision and awake state. Yeah. And then that Lakesha's colleague entered. Wow. And I felt myself being in two bodies at the same time. I was in my body. Uh-huh. And I also was in his body. And in my body, I could move the fingers. Uh-huh. I could In his body, I don't think I moved anything. But I felt that my hands are thick. My fingers are thick. Uh-huh. And I'm very thick and short. <laughs> exactly as Lakesh describes. Yeah. Uh, and I, it, it lasted. And I just accepted whatever. I didn't even try to stop. I didn't try to take control. I was experiencing that, you know, yeah. whatever happens. I felt that I'm breathing fine. I'm alive. Uh, nothing hurts. So I can move my fingers. That was enough. Uh-huh. And um, after about 15 minutes of being in that state, they left. And I felt just fine, completely fine. And after a few minutes, of, I kind of analyzed all of that and went to sleep by myself. I wasn't pushed into sleep. I was yeah. just you know, right. yeah. it was in the middle of the night. And then Lakesh soon confirmed that it was their experiment. I invited more of that, but it didn't happen again. But uh-huh. it was very profound. Again, one one of the most profound, real life, no yeah. cheating, no uh, no mistake, was something supernatural. And yeah. Lakesh took... Wow. Um, he was kind of running that experiment. He wanted to observe wow. it from the side. So he wasn't the entering me. Wow. Wow. And also, Lakesh asks people if you know anybody, anyone wants to let him experience sex. Uh-huh. And uh, my answer was, for, uh, for a couple million dollars, I can allow him to do that. That's so funny. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, he, Lakesh, uh, is, he's kind of you know hungry for experiences. Uh, yeah. uh, and uh, one of his best experiences was uh, eating a, a, a McDonald's hamburger. And Lakesh loved it. Oh. In Jim's body, he ate McDonald's hamburger. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, that's so funny. Another thing I wanted to mention <laughs> in regard to Germany, Lakesh told us a story mm-hmm. where the Blues took some of the credit for the end of the Nazi empire. Nazi whatever empire. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Obviously, blues are neutral. Uh, Lakesh is blues. Yeah. Short pre audience. Uh, they don't do things. But at that time, how was it? Uh, negative Syrians were helping Nazis uh, and Hitler. So top Nazi leaders were in direct contact with them. They were guided, given technologies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's why they felt so... Superior superior and invincible yeah that's the word thank you yeah you are invincible <laughs> yes invincible they were so you know they would do very uh again the word brave things there is another word for that yeah. so they they knew that they they are you know they are covered and uh and they were actually being cheated and tricked into thinking and into all this nazi uh idea of dominance and genetic mm-hmm. dom uh, genetic chosenness mm-hmm. by by the Syrians, which didn't really mean that they just wanted to exploit uh, that to take over the control. And the blues, I don't remember what Lakesh said. It's somewhere on the record, but I think they exposed somehow. Maybe they came to to the leaders, or maybe they exposed it to some other through the mediators. But there was an exposure of that. Uh-huh. Of that treachery, is it the right treachery, word? Treachery, 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 yeah. treachery. Yeah. So basically, they exposed true intentions of the Syrians. That was, yeah. you know, the only thing that they what they did, they, they exposed it to someone who exposed it to, to the generals. And as soon as they discovered that, the whole alliance started falling apart, uh-huh. and it fell apart. Yeah. And basically, the Syrians withdrew their support, and that was. The key, one of the key points where the Germany started failing, failing. Ah, okay. It's... So that was a nice uh, story, which uh, so uh, the Blues there kind of took some of the credit for the 
I believe. I need, I, I need to reconfirm that story somehow because I might get remember it a bit wrong, but I think yeah. that's what, what was happening. Well, this reminds me of a question that my daughter Jessica had when she asked about North the North Koreans. And yes, yes. I think she managed to ask to cure that question, and she said, well, they are, what's that race? Um, they're very, they're aggressors. Was it reptilian? I remember. Was it reptilian? There was some... No, it's, I don't think it was, no, it wasn't reptilian. It was another, and I don't remember the name of the race, but I remember that it was a race of warriors. Yes, and Jessica asked me when she heard that answer, she said, well, why would they do that? What do they have to gain? They can't take physical form. No, 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 no. let me clear that up. Yeah. Uh, historically, the Korean race genetically came from the race of warriors. Yeah. Uh, many, many, many thousands of years ago, when the humanity was forming, maybe, I would, I would guess, 50,000, 100,000. That's, you know, every race has influence of certain alien race. Like, yeah. Jews come from certain planet, and I don't know which planet they come yeah. from. Uh, Ar Arians became Aryans, and uh, according to Lakesh, they are the ones in, uh, you know, they are typical Aryans, white white skin, uh, blonde hair, blue eyes, uh -huh. uh, from Orion. Uh -huh. And uh, possibly they came through Pleiades to us, but, but it's, you know, I would love to know more. Yeah. Um, some Indian tribes came from, I think the Maya came from the planet Maya in Pleiades, at least that's, you know, according to Pleiadians. Mm -hmm. Um, Japanese was said to be uh, created, nobody knows by who, but as a glue race which will glue Earth nations together. That was in one of the channel channelings. Dagon tribe and black Africans come from, I think they come from Syrians, but the Syrians, when I spoke to Syrians, Dagon tribe has a memory that they come from Syrians. They yeah. have the legends. Yeah. Uh, the Syrians say that the ones which we spoke, I think there are many types of Syrians, yeah. but the ones which you spoke, Cynthia said that their race uh, was the one in Iran, Iraq, uh, Syria, Syria, Sirius is the same thing, Sirius. Right? Syria, Assyrians, again from yeah. Sirius. Yeah. Uh, uh, Armenians, Egypt, North Africa. That's in the uh, Arabian. Arabs, Arabian Peninsula Arabs. So, so these are have heavy influence of Syrian yeah. genetics. Yeah. So Koreans come from a uh, unknown race. They they named the planet, but they didn't you know they didn't tell me anything because we don't know what what planet yeah. where this planet is in the sky. So yeah. And these were ancient warriors. So your question was why would they do that? I don't know. You know some of the some of them are refugees and some of them are colonists and some of them like to inject their DNA somewhere and sometimes it's just a crash of the vehicle and uh, yeah. and people just survive and make new settlement. I yeah. don't know. Um, what about the Arcturians? I, I, I looked up a meetup in near me because remember I told you I'm trying to get you and Jim over here, right? So I looked in meetup.com yes. to see if I could find an ET group or UFO group or whatever. There are in that many that I found on meetup.com anyway, but there was one woman who channels the Arcturian. She claims to be a hybrid Arcturian human, and she teaches their culture and their teachings. And I'm going to go to her meetup um, later in this month and meet her. Oh, wow. And introduce her to the human colony and uh -huh. see if, you know, you. you're welcome, and see if they would like to, you know, uh, I'm we have to get a certain amount of people. We figured out yesterday. We have to get at least a hundred people. That maybe sixty people would come to this meeting, so that mm -hmm. it would. I, I already found a possible place to have it, but we'd have to pay something there, you know, and and the flight. So we're trying to figure out first how many people we could realistically get to attend before we can go forward. Because if there's too few people. You know, yes. it's going to work. So I'm going to yes. go to her meeting, but to meet her, because I'm always excited to meet, you know, somebody <laughs> from another planet. Yes, I think it's a good idea. We 
we would love it. So far, the biggest audience gym channel to was about maybe 12 people. But he did it so many times, and yeah. every time it was just fine. He gym does it well, and I don't think he's affected by number of people. Obviously, okay. nice people are better, but yeah, but the number of people I don't think it matters. Okay, I I, I performed uh, you know in other public things, but you know my my role is minimal. I. Mm -hmm. I just guide and you know, and provide my my energy. That's it. So, so I think we can do sixty people. That would be fine. So we'll we'll see what we can get back. We never travel with Jim, but I think we can travel. <laughs> uh, I travel. He travel. You know, you know. I'm fifty. He's I don't remember. He is older, and uh, we can we can do that. We can fly and uh, and do the session and. And teach some stuff. I don't think Jim can ch channel for more than he normally channels, but he can channel either in two days or take a big break and recover. And I can teach uh, energy medicine and and whatever I write in the books about mm -hmm. extraterrestrials yeah. and yeah. higher self, spirit world, law of attraction, all of that stuff. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm still working on that, but I'm going to go meet this woman. I. It's really nice. And I was um, sharing this with somebody the other day that I met a man from another planet in Germany. And mm -hmm. his name was um, Alex Alexander Alexander. Okay. And he was giving seminars. He was giving seminars on ascension principles. He was talking okay. to the people about taking care of the earth, taking care of the animals. Um, he was very soft-spoken, physically very big man, tall, mm -hmm. really tall. Uh, very soft-spoken. When I looked at him directly in the eyes, they became really big and blue. <laughs> okay. Like really beautiful. Okay. And, um So he told me, he told several people at that meeting that we mm -hmm. were visitors from okay. somewhere else. And he did a meditation. He created music. He created his own music, which was just stupendous, just really... You can tell it was not earthly music. It was okay. just too great. When when he, uh, he uses a piano or something like that? Uh, no, I think he. I'm not sure which instruments he used because he was selling his CDs at the oh, seminar. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not sure how. Did you get a CD? I I had one. I have to find it. I have one of them. Yeah, share it with us. I yeah. I was thinking that that if I find it and I can somehow manage to share it, I'll definitely do that because it's so beautiful. Okay. And so moving, and I had a talk with him when afterwards, and I told him that when he did the special meditation, I saw myself as half woman, half eagle, and I had a partner next to me who was half man, half eagle, and we belonged to the Anasazi planet, because apparently my, so I have some Anasazi American Indian ancestry. I see. And... And I said, we were flying over all the Native American tribes here in America, and we were crushing all of the alcohol <laughs> and the drugs on it. You know, we were just trying to, like, clear all I that. I understand. And he said, yeah, I think you could do something like that. So when yeah, I... because, uh, yeah, Native Americans have uh, genetic inability to right. uh, digest alcohol. So, yes. yes. Yeah, so when I came to America back in 2008... I came back to America, and I started uh, going to college for drug um, drug addiction counseling, and okay. my focus was the Native American communities. Perfect. So I, I studied the I studied their history, and I met some of the uh, leaders there for child okay. welfare, Native American child welfare. I had some of the, I arranged for some leaders to come to the college and give presentations because Excellent. I felt that they should not be marginalized anymore like as for, much as possible that's part of their suffering is to be so marginalized and okay. not a minority in this country they are a separate entity and many people don't think of them like that so anyway i got very inspired but i found out when i started studying and doing internship that the native americans don't want outside people coming in to help them they want to solve their own problems through their own tradition and their own culture and to revive their culture. Like one tribe in Washington State where I was living, they were restoring their canoe building culture. And they had a lot of their young people building their canoes. And once a year, they would travel up and down the lake on the Pacific Ocean and visit other tribes. And during these canoe um, outings or whatever you would call them, um, sojourns, there was no drugs or alcohol allowed. 
So the young people mm -hmm. involved, you know, they just said they did this one month journey without drugs and alcohol. So this mm -hmm. was their way of healing their tribe. I see. So I sort of lost a bit of my <laughs> purpose because I it's that was like a big No, no, you uh, there is no single right way. You know, you still can help them. Yeah. You know, some of them would reject it, some of them not. Uh, I have a friend who recently visited a tribe uh, and taught them his uh, his, his arts, and they were welcoming him. So it's not universal. No, yeah. there is, you know, if somebody doesn't like it, some other would like yeah. would like you. Yeah. So since I was new back in America, I didn't know so many people. It was harder for me to get around and. Yeah, I'm, and also you're not you're not from Earth. You're from from uh, from up there. You're you're related, right? Yes, you're related. You're you are entitled to do that. Um, that's what somebody told me. They said I should have the Native Americans do a um, what do you call past life a regression with me, and uh -huh. they would find a lot of Native American there, so they would trust. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was it Lakesh who told me that? Somebody yeah. told me that. Oh no, there's a woman I know here in where I'm living in Arizona, she's a medium. She has spoken with ETs before in her mediumship and okay. she can't wait to meet you and Max when you come out here. I gave her your website and told her to check it out. And um, she was the one who was telling me. I was talking to her also about this Native American vision and how I sort of lost it and she says, No, 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 um, you know, you tell them to do a past life regression and they'll trust you. <laughs> uh, nobody has to authorize you. They don't even need to the past life regression. Yeah. You know, uh, if someone doesn't like you, others would. Yeah. Uh, just uh, if you have your confidence in yourself, you authorize. I, I authorize you. Oh, thank you, Max. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, this this is what I lack, Max. This is my big deal is that my confidence level often is lacking to just go out there. And I'm alone. Next I'm... time, sp speaking to, uh, to Lakesh or any other extraterrestrial, ask if, uh, if you're appropriate and uh, they will tell you. You know, if there is something blocking, that's fine. But if there is nothing blocking, uh, again, my friend came and uh, they were welcoming his help. Yeah, awesome. Uh, I have another story about Native Americans. Yeah. Uh, the um, it's it's online on my uh, other channel, Max mm -hmm. Steinberg Two channel. Uh, interview with a uh, alien uh, contactee. Mm -hmm. She has a lifetime. A uh, series of abductions, but she volunteered for those. Mm -hmm. She continuously volunteers for the rehabilitation program and helping others. So, um, so the, she's not abductee; she is contactee. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, at some point, she got a message in her mind mm -hmm. uh, to go and give a certain message to a. Uh, a leader of Native American Indians, uh -huh. and she lived nearby, so it was a drive on the car. So she she came to his house, and she wasn't sure what it is. And <laughs> until later, she only 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 later she would realize what that it was all for real, and it was meant what it meant. But but basically, she was met by his wife, and because he is a tribe leader, he his wife's work as his secretary, so. So she was very suspicious. Why would a white woman come and uh, and do something? But so, but she came to the leader and he said to let her in. She 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 gave him a message and the message was very simplistic: peace and no uh, peace at any price, uh -huh. peace at any price. Uh -huh. A very short message. Uh -huh. And at that time he uh, he explained that it was right time and right message because they were about. This weekend, that weekend of that week, to go uh, uh, to go to do something violent. I don't remember what was that. Wow. Some yeah. revolution or something. Yeah. Uh, a revolt. And so he canceled that. And later soon, sh uh, oh, and uh, also the second part of the message that, that was he would be uh, leading leading his tribe or something uh -huh. uh, into something great. And soon she saw in a newspaper that he was leading his tribe in a peace march, in a peace march. Wow, that's awesome. So she 
serve the purpose. <laughs> she was given a task, wow. performed the task, and it prevented violence and ended up in something good. Yeah, that's beautiful. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And and it was through your higher connections. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, up in Rochester, New York, is it multiculti? Is it um, interracial? Is it white to white? Is it how is it there in Rochester? Let me think. Uh, Americans are very used to uh, foreigners, so there is enough foreigners, so people are not scared of my accent. <laughs> Although every time I speak, many people would would look and do other analysis in their mind. In a high, more cult, more international cities like New York, Washington, mm -hmm. that analysis happens in split second. Yeah. Here, it's for some people it takes maybe. 10 seconds to make the conclusion, you know, am I dangerous and am I crazy? Why am I speaking with that strange accent? Uh -huh. And maybe they even don't recognize Russian accent. So <laughs> it's not as multicultural as Toronto, which is, you know, three hour drive north from us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but on the other hand, there is plenty here. As I, you know, I started living in uh, uh, Stanford, the New York City, Manhattan then uh, uh, Richmond, Virginia, then Maryland, Baltimore, uh, Rockville, and so on. And as I moved from Ro uh, Richmond to here, the percent of black people goes lower, lower, and lower. So here it's it's in the center of the town, it's it's higher, but but out, out, on outskirts, it's, yeah. it's way more white. Yeah. And the blacks here are... A bit different. They are possibly from different African races. Sometimes you can meet even real Africans, not the ones which were uh, cultured here for lived here for many generations, but the ones which came recently, yeah. and they're quite different. Yeah. Uh, you know, the ones which came here were the ones which weren't warriors, which would uh, which wouldn't fight and become slaves in the past. Mm -hmm. So they were specific tribes, specific genetics, specific culture. Mm -hmm. And then the ones which come from Africa, these are the ones which survived there. So they are different. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a long story. Uh, another thing is, recently I went to a beautiful ceremony, which was Indian chanting, Hindu Indians. Oh, uh, yeah. I read about that. That was amazing. Uh, and I don't think there was many Indians there. There was few. The drummer was from India. He was visiting from New York. And the drumming was Im extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, you know, you how much say, sound right? you can get from, from the drum. But, but what he did was... Uh, there is special art. When you just hit the drum, uh -huh. it's simple. But he did something like... He hit it and then he pushed on it, so it made a sound like wow, like oh, oh wow, 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 and that was some. I, yeah. I didn't practice that yet, but yeah. but that is something I need to learn. It is unique, and so the drum sings now not in a single note, but it's like a whole yeah. new dimension of the sound. So when you and say, I was so happy, yes. When you say Indian, you mean in, from India, not Native American. Right? Hindu Indian, I said. Hindu, 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 Hindu yes. right. okay. Hindu. Yeah. Have, have you ever been to a powwow, Max? What's that? A powwow. It's a Native American celebration where they have dance oh. and drumming and everything. No, um, but it's not. I guess in in uh, in in Canada right, there are some Indians, but not nearby. Yeah, there are some Indians. There are. Uh, we have uh, ancient Indian historical places which are magic and charged with vortices, but there is no <laughs> Indians around. Really. Uh, <laughs> But culturally, it's it's a mix. Uh, people say that we have very conservative sort of, or maybe German and other conservative mm -hmm. sort of people here in in Rochester. Mm -hmm. But but it also gives us you know sort of peace and relax, relaxed state. But also there is a huge community of of uh, alternative culture, new age alternative culture. Mostly those are. Uh, Retired people. Somehow, when you get retired, you either have money or don't have money, but you are not afraid anymore. Yeah, and those people become become free in their minds. Uh -huh. uh, 
And but you know, young generation as well. I met some of those. You know, Rochester is so tiny. There is everything only one. We have one beach, and on <laughs> one beach we have a uh, you know group of hippies sometimes. So, <laughs> and these hippies, you know, uh, normal in other times they are around one hippie store. It's everything is like. Uh, we have everything, but only one of those. Uh-huh. It's a tiny hippie store, <laughs> and high, you know, every, every everybody knows everybody. It's like a village. So, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm blessed. Um, when you Google Reiki, Reiki is a healing art. Why do I do Reiki. That? Reiki is. I do oh, you Reiki. do. Yeah. Reiki yeah. is a healing art for, yeah. you know, for our listeners. Okay. When you put yeah. hands on people and send the energy and heal. Yeah. So when you Google Reiki, and then uh, Rochester come somewhere in the top maybe top 30th in the list of cities. And if you wow. if you divide the number of hits by the number of people, it goes first. So, in my opinion, Rochester is a capital of Reiki. Wow. At least by concentration of Reiki healers. And, uh, and it grows. Uh, we have a wonderful, amazing... Uh, meet up where we have Reiki share and you come give Reiki, take yeah. Reiki, yeah. with healing every week and it's um, donation based and I met wonderful people there yeah. and basically you can get healing every day. I can do these webinars because if I get hurt, I go there and I get fixed. Ah, wow, that's awesome. How does the, how, when you do the, um, when Jim is channeling and Lakesh is doing Reiki or Takir or another ET uh-huh. friend. How does that feel for you? Is it a different kind of energy that goes in through Jim's hands? Do you, can you recall that? Great question. Hmm. You know, I sometimes I it's the same energy, but you know there is some difference. You know, when the reptilian was pounding me with Jim's hand, it was painful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, reptilian was he was so aggressive. Well, he he said he is not violent, but, but it it wasn't published yet. But but uh, oh. you see that it, it's coming. It's already all in final stages of editing. Oh, Thanks awesome! To, I've been uh, waiting uh, for that. Thank you. Yeah, been... yeah. So so uh, no. Uh, and and last time, I was spaced out because of that healing energy. I was spaced out, and I had to like ask questions, do the normal session. Yeah. So I had to kind of get myself out of the heal, being healed state to, you know. Oh, to, I see, yeah. And then I stood up because I, 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 you know, sometimes when it's a healing energy, it's one thing. When you have to, you know, do the interview, it, it's another thing. So Yes, yes. So, uh, but basically in Reiki, typically you send the energy from a palm. And they taught Jim, uh, it was Takur who taught Jim, but... Yeah. But not only that, that yeah. you know, you can do the fingers in uh, Liran, the case of Liran. In Liran culture, they do Reiki with, with fingers. Oh. So there is a flow of energy from fingers and flow uh-huh. of energy from palm, and it's different. Uh-huh. It, you know, there is difference. Yeah. So Jim is now doing, and uh, when I do head, I, sometimes I do palm, and some, sometimes I do, let me think, I do like that. Yeah. Actually, the hands kind of go like that, but then yeah. on another person. But yeah. but you do fingers, and that's a little different. Uh, it works also, but yeah. also with fingers you can do, you can do massage with energy. Yes. You can massage with energy. Yeah. So yes, um, it's a uh, in Qigong you do both. You do palm and fingers in Qigong. You kind of do that. You can do yeah. in Qigong a typical hand movement is like that. It's uh-huh. another shape of Reiki, another yeah. form of Reiki. Yeah, Actually, right. Reiki is is extension of Qigong. The founder of Reiki was a Qigong master. So oh, it's really? it's just a version of Qigong. I see. Very interesting. Yeah. I got a, the first Reiki initiation in Germany in 2000. And... Coming back... Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, coming back to this extraterrestrial lecturer, uh, what else was... What, do, what else do you know about him? So he you said he's big. Was he typical... Aryan with blue eyes, blue hair, or oh, blue eyes, white hair. It, it it no, it was very mysterious where he came from. The the story was that there was a light which beamed down into a okay. mountain in Austria. All right. And suddenly he appeared. All right. And I, he had like light brown hair, and I remember that he had when I was watching him from the audience that his eyes were smaller and darker than when. 
he had a meet and greet and we can all take his hand and I just looked directly in his eyes and they became blue like I told you big and blue and so full of love I see and, so he he was in disguise yeah I think so uh, what's his name well I've been trying to find him again since I was there his name at the time was um, Alexander Alexander oh you already said that yeah yeah with two A's and I have been trying to find him since I've been back in America because I was hoping that he would tour, you know, America. But he spoke German at the time, and I don't know if he speaks English or not. I don't know if his... Well, it's easy. You know, his role might be basically to help, you know, that particular part of the continent to ascend. There's a, oh, lot, there's a lot of spirituality in, in Germany also. And I was in contact with different, you know, mediums, and I went to some of them and things like that. That's when they all told me that, you know, uh, what am I doing? And one guy said, what are you doing here? You're also a medium. I said, yeah, but I... <sighs> so I've got to find out, you know, but why I can't experience the ETs more deeply and directly. I asked Lakesh through Jim. I said, please come to me, you know, teach me how to do channeling and stuff. And... um he said, I, I didn't, I had an ET, do you know about the ET chakra, Max? <clears throat> oh, no. There's a chakra uh, between our uh, solar plexus and sexual chakra. There's another chakra. And this is supposed to be where we can do ET activation. Okay. And I did a special activation when I was in Germany. And I was told that, you know, if there is a connection, if there is ancestry there, you will have a physical reaction. You will, you will notice it. So I went through the meditation and I said the words, not really thinking much would happen. But then I sort of had this like where my whole body, it was like paralyzed for a second, but like a nice paralyzed feeling. And I mean, I just, I was really surprised. And okay. I haven't done much with it since then. And that's Lakesh said that I should redo that initiation. So maybe that's what I need to do. I wonder why, so it's around the belly button, above belly button? It's below, it's below be, between the, below belly button. the sexual chakra, yeah, between the um, second and third chakra, hmm. yeah, below the belly button. Um, I wonder why is it there? Uh, basically, the my question, Yeah. I'm questioning this because uh, in my understanding, simplistic, simplifying, uh, a root chakra connects us to the ground. Right. Uh, sexual chakra connects us to the animal nature. Uh, solar plexus connects us to the humanity in old style. And heart chakra connects us to humanity of the fourth dimension. Uh, throat chakra connects us to spirit world of human basically dead human spirits, mm -hmm. and they're called discarnate, discarnate spirits. And uh, third eye would be to angels, higher energies, and crown to the God. That That is a simplistic kind of multidimensional connection. So we are, by design, already connected to all these levels. So I would assume in that extraterrestrial work on the level four-dimensional work on uh, extra work work on the level of heart chakra now you kind of lower that be below somewhere between animals and and uh, old style <laughs> humans which is possible but you know we need maybe those those somehow there should be explanation for that okay I, I see the sexual chakra as connecting us to all the fluidity of life and because the uh, Physically, you know, it's connected to our uh, bodily fluids and oh. our sexuality and our innate creativity. And for me, the solar plexus, in addition to what you shared about it, is also connected to um, our self-identity, trust, you know, the sun. It's, a, it's, you know, it's a yellow color, so it has to do with life and trust and joy and um, self-identity. So... I don't know, but it's like there's a lot of life going on there. <laughs> hey, Ben, you want to say hi to Max? <laughs> if you want to be cut out of the video, oh. tell me tell me, tell me, me later or now. Oh, okay. Do, do, are, are you fine being on video on YouTube? Let's put this on the, on the site. 
Oh, I don't mind. I'm just in the background. Anyway. Oh, thank you. Nice background <laughs> image. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. It's anyway. nice when people are not scared. Very nice. Yeah. yeah anyway, uh, I don't know. I just know that at the time I was, um, I mentioned to you, there's a site called Pal Talk where we could also do public meetings. Um, so I met several people there who were very spiritual and did a lot of mediumship and contactees and all that. And she gave me this particular meditation for, with this particular to put my, you know, connect my hands there. So I don't know more than that. I, I know that we have multiple chakras. We have the seven main ones and then we have also behind in our back. And, yeah, many others, yes. You know that. So who knows? I don't know. Now, there's something, Max, I'm not sure you've heard of this. It's called White Time Universal energy and this is where you get a you get a tunnel you get a channel to the ets and to the higher master so reiki is like connect uh, the energy which is in all life right around us all the life i see reiki as a vertical life energy and this white time universal healing energy it's it's um did i say vertical i meant horizontal reiki is right. horizontal and okay. the white time universal energy is vertical and when okay. i do healing I would connect both the vertical and I would connect the rate okay. plus okay. The time and I would let it flow, you know. And so there's the, I mean, there was also this connection to any ETs who were interested in helping with human healing, which was a flow. It was a special seminar I did in, in Germany. If you look up this White Time Universal Healing, you'll be very inspired by it as well, <laughs> I'm sure. Okay, okay. So I don't really know the answer to your question about why it's that particular activation was there i don't know uh it was more it was more ancestral um activation connecting to the ancestry so maybe if the second and third chakra are connected to life in one form or another then maybe this is like um i i don't know <laughs> now i'm just pulling it out of the air max <laughs> i don't know yeah so coming back to your birthday um I did a bit of research on um, on statistics of um, different astrological signs. Mm -hmm. It was a nice uh, scientific scientific project which I had, mm -hmm. which I tried to use real statistics and see yeah. how the <clears throat> how, how that um, works out with uh, zodiac signs. Yes, so. Pisces were standing out a number of astronauts. There was a crazy prevalence of astronauts among Pisces. Really? Wow. It was like many more than in other signs. <laughs> uh, somehow, you know. Wow. Not everyone who has Pisces goes goes up there, but you know those who go up there, they yeah, many are. <laughs> they 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 yeah. very likely are very likely to have. To you have, will also. Uh, you will also find a lot of nurses and social workers as Pisces. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And uh, also uh, high-level generals, like real strategic uh, generals who do fighting and are famous for their really? army achievements. Yes. Wow. Um, you know, so, so it's kind of one, one line is serving as a Jesus, like serving as a saint. Another one is... Uh, you know, again, serving as a general yeah. or another serving as a as a as a yeah. astronaut. Yeah. Wow. So that is one thing. Uh, Pisces in general, but also you're very close to Aquarius. Yeah. And I have a friend, uh, and we connect really well. Uh, uh, he is also in that in that time area. Just just you know, end of February. Yeah. So you get some of the Aquarian traits as well. Yes. Uh, and in an old cycle of cycle of uh, missions in life, missions yeah. in life. Yeah. Uh, so the the cycle ends with Sagittarius Capricorn, and it goes like like you know it's it's a winter and in North. The North Hemisphere is also night. Basically, it ends with sort of death, mm -hmm. and uh, and then 
Aquarius is the beginning of new cycle. It's rebirth. Mm -hmm. So we are still very much on the dark side, but we are aimed at, at the light. Mm -hmm. We are aimed from the dark side at the light. And Pisces is just a second step in the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then it goes bolder, bolder, and bolder. So July, August, it's, it's full bloomed, yeah. bloomed life. As our it, it's not a good analogy for southern hemisphere where zodiac signs are the same, but at least it it's a good analogy which kind of explains things. And one of the, you know, most uh, I would say deadly signs are uh, Scorpio and Sagittarius, where Scorpio you know spikes and Sagittarius really fights. Yeah. Not, not that they, everybody of them are doing, it, but they have that, that that they have that quality of being able to hit and fight. Yeah. Yeah. Sagittarius to hit and spike and yeah. Uh, I mean, sorry, other way around. Uh, Scorpius spike right. and Sagittarius to fight. You know, yeah. as a fighter, as a soldier. So, um, so we are in that beginning, and we are very much aimed to the to the light and to the higher knowledge. Mm -hmm. Me as a Aquarius and you as a, as a Pisces. Yeah. And another thing was interesting that how, you know, both, you know, Pisces is most known for that trait. You know, they kind of go up, you know, face the trouble. And when uh, the trouble kind of covers them, they, they how do you call it? <laughs> dive, <laughs> dive, yes, yes. dive and disappear. That's true. <laughs> and then they kind of it's, it's soon after they appear again from the water as if nothing happened yes <laughs> you know like the the uh the tank right up in the um the fish tank yeah yeah, we... yeah another proper yeah another property of pisces is that on one hand they're very protected you know as yeah. generals and as astronauts as uh you know nurses they are very pretty on the other hand they are very sensitive and uh, sensitive. feel offense deeply but they have that property of take it in and get it out and come back yes. new and refreshed yes thank i have you. the same quality in, in in many ways yes thank you i see i see pisces oh may I, go ahead i see pisces as transformers so yes we may not um many pisces are not that interested in money but and we may some of us may not seem so externally successful, but our job on this earth is to exactly like you explained, take in, go down, transform, come back up again. So we're like sponges. We absorb all the sorrow of the earth. We take it in. We go down. We transform, and we come back up again. <laughs> and our external environment is very important. My former husband um, is an Aquarius. Well, he still is. I could, if I say he was an Aquarius, he still is an Aquarius. All right. And we, where we didn't get along is that the Aquarius mind is like running a mile a minute and he's extremely active. And the Pisces just sort of wants to meditate and absorb. And, you know, we're uh -huh. slow. We're slow. So you have that speed and that slowness. And if both don't learn to understand how to get the benefits of that from each other, instead of just feeling like, ah, you know, hurry up, you know, <laughs> didn't have much patience <laughs> for my style, let's say. And, um, yeah, but anyway, <laughs> I'm always, I attract a lot of Aquarius people in my life anyway. Yeah. All right, let's wrap it up. Um, what should we say at the ending? Um, we discussed many things. It was fun to meet you in person. It was very and meet, Thank you. And meet your um, Ben. Benedetto. Yeah, Ben. Ben as well. <laughs> yeah. I would say let's try to go to Era together, Max. Let's try to go visit our spirit, our our children. <laughs> yeah, we apply for the visit to Era, <laughs> and actually, I would would be happy to visit any benevolent, yeah, benevolent um, planets, ships. And uh, being visited as well, I'm inviting that. Max, before we end, may I mm -hmm. ask what has what has your hybrid son told you about his life there? Have you communicated with him? <sighs> yes. Uh, it's a big story. I don't even want to start it. Let let oh. me make it short. Um, 
they have social life. Mm -hmm. He was a child and a teenager, and he wanted to be popular among them. So mm -hmm. it was so similar to Earth. There is so many differences, but but that was, you know, a common trait. And then uh, he he is a human, largely human. So uh -huh. he is shorter. Uh -huh. Especially they they made him short because he's intended to be, he is brought up to be a, a representative on Earth, and they sh slow down his growth so on Earth. He wouldn't be huge; he would be normal height. Oh, okay. So he is shorter. So he, among his peers, he would he would be not equal on size, but he would be loud and uh, talented. So he was popular. Uh -huh. He wrote poetry and. Uh, he was awesome. happy that his poetry is read by others and uh, praised. Oh, okay, awesome. Um, uh, they, uh, he was so concerned with the, with his looks and s s color of his skin. Yeah. At some point, he decided to follow the fashion to be uh, what's his word? Um, um, environment friendly, and uh, they 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 genetically modify their skin to be green so they absorb the light from the sun. Uh -huh. Really? Now, yes. So they're green. They can be different colors, but now there is a fashion for green color so they uh, they absorb the light. Uh -huh. And now he is happy to announce that he learned how to change the color of his skin and now when he goes to different planets he can uh, he can be politically correct and more acceptable by by adjusting his color to this planet, so and he says says it takes him seconds to change the color. Wow, cool! So he is now a chameleon, right? Uh, yeah. So he's now a chameleon uh, adjusting to. So he said when he comes here, he will look uh, healthy Earth color. Wow, nice, nice. Okay. But yeah, he is. Uh, Thank yeah, you. completely. They they completely. Um, he is four dimensional. Uh, they are very different. They uh, they can do miracles from our perspective, and on the other hand, they have very normal human emotions as well. And they, and you know, they live there for six hundred years, so more or less. So so they are uh, like gods to us. It's nice to have a son which is also has properties of semi god. Yeah. yeah, awesome. Yeah, I feel the same way. I'd like. I haven't spoken with. Uh my daughter yet so i'm looking forward to that yeah yeah that'd be great well let's send send our love and prayers to our children okay And when I um, when I meditate, I usually invite one or two or uh, several of my friends, and typically I, I invite them to visit. And each of them has a different way they appear in my mind. They appear in sort of certain sort of kind of light. Mm -hmm. Nice, very nice. So my meditation is usually invitation. I invite that ah, and that and that yeah. and that. So uh, it's a map with a purpose and and I clearly formulate the beginning and the end of the message who I'm inviting and then okay. I wait for, for them to come oh, okay. and here we end up and thank you very much to everybody thank for you. listening and thank you for you for your um, reappearance <laughs> it was it was awesome to share with you thank you so much yeah a good day you too Max bye bye bye